That's always the number one question. What do you do when they ask for proof of funds, right? Um, I write doing? a letter. <laughs> and I have a private, I don't want to tell a really good private um, lender that says I could write a letter and change all it and he signed it. Yeah. 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 You know, it means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've had somebody call the bank. Uh, they've tried to call him too. Yeah, but the bank's like, I'm not giving you his bell. Yeah. <laughs> but I never get that question, so I do different, maybe different type of deals. Well, I do less some, complex. And I'm when you're dealing, family yeah, if you're doing now. a lot of, yeah, multifamily or buying off the MLS, you need, yeah. you need that kind of kind of stuff in some, most of the time. Sure. Yeah. Um, for like internet marketing, you got the internet marketing. No. no. I don't right now. I mean, uh, I don't do PPC. Um, okay. Paper collect, no. That's good. What are your favorite marketing strategies? I'm, I'm kind of late. I don't know if y'all want to over there. My favorite right now is cold calling and cold texting. Glad you're here. 90% of my stuff is referral. All right, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's just from building up a reputation of getting stuff closed, but then also doing what I say. <coughs> So a lot of people like Jeff, he doesn't do Detroit, cool, I will. Right. <laughs> I just don't know it, you see? And that's what a lot of people, they don't know the city, they don't know the neighborhoods. I do. We are valuing the deal, I just didn't So people that, a lot of stuff, just kind of, they don't want to deal with some other sense to me. And then I also do right now, too. I do direct mail. So nobody do magic sign? Yes. Yes. I'm supposed to be doing it. I'm glad you brought that up. We never said it. I got a whole box in the back of my yeah, car. Yeah, bandit size is another way of getting buyers as well. Yeah. Yeah. True. And it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have any strategies for like where to place them? Yes. Yes. No. You don't want to put them on. Uh, yeah, you don't want to just go throw them up. Mark can tell you about that. <laughs> tell them about your uh, story about the uh, bandit size. <laughs> Your son, your son, put them all up. I paid him two dollars a sign. A lot of money. He, he didn't care where he put these up. He put them in front of the mayor's house. He put them on major arteries where the cars are doing forty miles an hour. He put them in the wrong places. So the police called me and said, "We're going to give you." Over the weekend, you get your signs down, meaning I don't know where the signs were. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and he even took, like, if the house was boarded, like they put boards over the windows, right. he took big long nails and hammered them through the signs oh. straight into the windows. So they then left the sign there to the people who owned it off. So for the broken yeah. window, for the broken window, which I had oh, to fix. Wow. <laughs> so that was my experience with my son. But what it did, this is really important. It taught me where to put the signs. So here's the scoop. You don't put signs up on major arteries with high traffic because they can't read this. You gotta keep your sign very simple. You get roofing nails that I keep in this drawer. <laughs> you put them in the, the signs like this. You won't have any problem if you do this correctly. So you crisscross them. Notice that the Corrugations this away, so you're going to put them this away so the wind doesn't tear them down. I've had signs stay up seven years. Holy shit. And we're still getting phone calls. <laughs> That's awesome. In certain parts of Detroit. So, and you get a Twilio number, or you go to Walmart and buy a throwaway phone. Okay, now you're doing that in case you get the same call I got. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, and if a Twilio number, you can redirect the phone number. So, like, if you don't like Todd, just forward this number to him. And he can work with him. Okay? So, that's, but here's where you put them up. You put them at the end of streets, if you were in Detroit. At the end of the street where the stop sign is and the car has to stop next to a commercial building, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, that's not being used. Those signs will stay up forever. If there's a neighborhood block club they call that, that wants you to remove the signs, then you're going to put them up in party stores and gas stations on their property with the sign facing the pumps facing the store. So those are good areas. So earlier tonight they said, well, where do you get the buyers? Somebody over here asked that. Like, so if 
he's a renegade and he's got a buyer who wants to buy a certain quadrant, then he's got to figure out how to get the band that signs up. And if you're a brand new investor, knowing somebody that knows the buyers and they want where they want to buy, then he's an excellent person to go meet with, right? Yeah. And then you go put the signs up, now you're in a partnership. And you got somebody that will start teaching you the business. So if you're brand new, this is the kind of thing you can do. The bigger signs get better, more calls than the small ones. I won't use this anymore. Handwritten signs work good. And uh, with a black, black and yellow prints the best. This is 18 by 24. The cheapest place to get them is supercheapsigns.com. I still use, I've heard that people still use bandit signs today. I would never do that, no. Uh, and I, um, and you can put up 80 of these signs in about two hours if you're set up properly. Meaning you've got your nails pre-punched, signs in the back seat, you've got a driver, and you're hopping out of the car. And you're putting the sign at street level, not 40 feet up for low flying airplanes, <laughs> right so the cars can see it. And it works, okay? Okay. And your phones will ring. <laughs> so now you're in the lead business. But that doesn't mean anything because I'm in the lead business. I'm dead unless I've got people like this. Because I don't want to go to the house. If I go to the house, he can run faster than me. I'm going to get hurt. And, uh, you know, so you've got to make sure that you've got a good partner that can run. Hey, Eric, I have a question for you. So I've seen some of your houses that you're rehabbing. What makes you decide which ones to hold versus which ones to hold sale? Sorry. And, and then uh, why did you decide, just curious, to heat your floor in your bathroom? Um, so, what, uh, yeah, why did you decide? Why did you decide? Yes. Because he was showing off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, so, I was so as far as like the heated bathroom floors, the bathroom itself, the f I had to rip up the floor. Uh -huh. um, I, I had to go to the, the, the beam, basically. Yeah, and at that time, it's like, all right, so the heated floors, the unit, I mean, the, the, the floor mat is like $150. Oh, for him to install it, it's like a hundred dollars. It's not that. Ex it's not a huge expense. But what it does do is it adds value. It adds something to talk about if I'm gonna rent it out. Because right now, I don't know if I'm gonna rent that thing out to a long-term tenant or if I'm gonna do Airbnb. Okay. It's something that really does attract a tenant when you say the bathroom floors are heated. Um, so that was really the the main thought process behind. Like I'm, I'm already there at floor level. I can just add this. It's real minimum as far as an expense, but it's going to add huge value. Well, yeah, because you see those things, you know, on TV or whatever for like <coughs> fixer uppers or whatever, and you never hear about like the cost or the labor or anything like that. Yeah, so it's I'm not a, it wasn't a huge expense. And then what, how I determine what I want to flip now is, is like I mentioned earlier, like if I don't see fifty thousand dollars and it's like a complete rehab, I don't even want to do it. Okay. Um, it's it's really especially in Detroit. In Detroit, it's like I have to see a huge profit. Yeah, to, to even want to do it because it's a headache. It's a headache. Have you ever had a furnace stolen, hot water tank kind of thing? I see that shit happen so much. The, the last house I sold, that's crazy. Right. Right. The furnace and hot water tank the day it went on the market. All right, listen to this. Yesterday we closed one. Uh, yesterday we closed one. 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 Yesterday you know, except for we were showing it. So the front door was screwed shut, the side wasn't, it had a gate on there. So I didn't even go inside the house. I said, I'll go, sh you know, I unscrewed it, got in my truck, I'm leaving. They're coming up, they pull me over, they're so excited, brand new homeowner, smiling, everything else. And she goes, do you got a keys? I said, no, I just unscrewed the front door. I, you know, do you have the only set of keys? She said, okay, I'm already gone. We get a phone call the night before they went through the back window and stole the furnace and hot water. So we're getting close to the end. So there's a couple of things I want to do. So like buyer favorable purchase agreements, all the forms that you'd want, like the bandit signs and a video on how to do wholesaling, we're going to ship to you, but you've got to make sure you've given your information to Maureen in the back, okay? Before you go, and before you go, we want you to stick around and network. But the main thing I want to do before we go 
is I'd like you guys to give your contact information uh, to the group. So Todd, since you've got yours written, can you do it? Yeah, yeah my <laughs> number. Um, you know, here's my cell phone, 248-497-9195. Please go to my Facebook page, TC Deals Detroit. If you're a wholesaler and you have any deals, you're more than welcome to put your deal up there, okay? And this is my email address. The best way, if you need any help wholesaling, if you want to partner up, if you ever have a question, the best way to reach me is by text. Um, but feel free to call me too, so. Jeff, why don't you just repeat yours? Just yeah, before. yeah. So phone number 248-875-3010. I can check out my YouTube channel, Invest with Jeff, website. Um, so text is probably the best way. It's Jeff at investwithjeff.co if you want to email me. Yeah, so same thing. Um, I do partner with people on a 70-30 split. So if you want to coach and you want to do deals together or if you just had a deal and you want to help disposition it that's not in Detroit, um, you can reach out to me. And 70 goes to you? 70 goes to them. Look at that. I'm 50-50. <laughs> so what? I'm 64. <laughs> Jeff, you your number to me one more time. <laughs> all around, I mean, all around Detroit. I go from Ann Arbor, um, I mean, all Santa Clara Shores, Roseville, East Point. Oh, um, you're going to do some work with Jeff, right? I'm doing a lot in, um, done a lot in his park, Oak Park, Ferndale, Royal Oak. You know, so you do 70 30, like if it's just a lead, can you tell me, like, if I, what about if somebody give you a lead and you come to do How do you do that? You just do a, like, a, a bird dog feed. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. So 70 30 is a, is a coaching arrangement. Uh, if you want me to coach you on building your wholesale business, um, so a longer term relationship, you guys keep 70. You do all the work, you know. We talk about putting a marketing plan together, et cetera. What, what are you going to do? Um, but I, you know, I coach you. I get 30%. For how long? You know, it's funny. I structured different. Somebody wanted just five initial deals, so I did it that way. I said it's, it's month to month for the 30 day termination. We're gonna bring yeah. Jeff. We're gonna bring you back next month. So, yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, we'll skip it out. Okay. And we'll do the the interviews with you guys. I'll go out. Eric, I need to just scoot over so you're in the camera, and oh, then oh, tell okay. us how to get hold of you too. Your stuff. Oh yeah. So this is just this is myself two four eight two two nine four four eight zero, and then my email address. Uh, call me, text me. Uh, oh, yeah. So, hey, go ahead. So, you guys, can you guys stick around a little bit to network after? So, did you guys get value out of tonight? Yeah, yeah let's give them a warm thank you. Hi, my name is Tori. Uh, Tori Wahi. I am a wholesaler here in Detroit, Michigan. I attended uh, the panel, ex the real estate panel expert class tonight, and it was amazing. I uh, learned a few things. Um, I started. I've been wholesaling for about a, a year now. Uh, I got into it uh, because Eric Friday introduced me. And I'm just basically uh, coming out to uh, build relationships, network with other uh, mind like uh, individuals, and go from there. If you're looking to get into uh, wholesaling or any uh, other uh, real estate things, uh, I would suggest you highly come out to uh, real meetings, um, Facebook groups. Um, and come out and network, you know, meet people, uh, things like this, like the real estate uh, expert panel, uh, things of that sort. But you can download an app called Meetup. There's our uh, other ways, different ways uh, that'll let you know what type of uh, meetings are being held, where at the time and location. My name is Natasha Sands, um, and I came out tonight. I'm a a potential investor. Um, I'm actually currently a landlord and an attorney, so I'm looking to expand my wealth of knowledge and learn different tricks of the trade and how to increase my footprint in the real estate business. 
Um, I felt like the panel today was very informative. Um, it gave me lots of knowledge and insight about things I didn't know about, even though I do have a vast knowledge of real estate and the law and things of that nature. Um, it did teach me some things I didn't know. It gave me a different way to view different transactions um, and different avenues to get started. Mm -hmm.